Hey guys, it's Ellen, and welcome to my channel. We're doing some more expressive abstract, um, you know, landscape seascapes here. Today is a seascape. I think you guys are really enjoying these, and I'm so am I. It's just a fun way to express yourself in watercolor, to play around with the medium, to play around with wet on wet, and splattering, and seeing water, you know, certain paints repel paints, and just a different way to get you out of your comfort zone and trying new things. Um, there is a, you know, no need for a traceable on this one. I give you a reference photo so you can easily follow along. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, if you haven't hit the bell notification, bell notification button, please do so. So you know when my tutorials are up and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> we have a lot of fun over here and also check out my Patreon at ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays. That's four extra videos a month that are not on YouTube that are longer and more depth. Um, sometimes more advanced, and um, a live stream in the top tier as well as download for me. You check it out right up here. Boop. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So without further ado, let's get expressive with watercolor today and have some fun. All right, guys, I'm going to go over my supplies for this exercise. I have a piece of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. This is I cut it down to an eight by 10 size. I taped it down with some scotch tape on just some thick cardboard so I can move it around. Move these paints over here. Um, I'll use a one inch flat wash craft brush, just simple brush. I'll probably be using my Princeton eight long round. Um, I have a enamel tin for my paints this time because I can do a bigger surface in here. Paper towels, water jars are up here. Um, I give you the reference photo, but like I said, I'm taking my artistic license. I'm just giving it for the basically like the placement of like where the green would go or the flowers would go and then the ocean itself. But um, I'm not gonna follow the colors. I'm gonna do my own thing because I can. <laughs> you know, it's an expression of what I feel like. Um, and it's pretty much that's it. So I, you get the photo, don't need a traceable for this. And you're gonna figure out, you know, here's your, there's your piece of paper. You know, there's a horizon line that would be across hip here, way up here, go up top. Just gonna go across with your pencil. Remember, this is expressive, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then from here, you'll see, you're gonna go up and over and down where the ocean kind of like peeks through and then over in here, just drawing in the little green mounds and here. So it's just a teeny bit of the ocean that you're going to see, right? See that all this stuff. And then all this is just the green and the flowers. Now they have show like succulents and little flowers. This is California coastline. But I want you to get expressive. Take your pencil. This is a number two pencil, by the way. Just start making marks like so. Like, like the flowers are there. See? With the sound effects. So you can do all, you can draw the little bubble flowers if you want, and then the grasses. Now you see right over here it's kind of like sand. We do want to keep some. I like I picked this photograph because I like that it's mostly the, the the green with some floral and then some sand. So I don't want to paint like the whole entire picture. Let's see. I'm just taking the pencil and scribbling. You can just hand me scribbling. See. Grasses, zoom in, oops, woohoo, overexposed, <laughs> there we go, I'm just trying to zoom in, there we go, sometimes the camera doesn't want to play, see, scribble, scribble, grasses, just like this, go, go crazy, do little side scribbles, you know, usually I'm always erasing my pencil, right, but this time I'm not, I'm gonna help have it guide us. So I'm just making the scribbles of the grass. You can draw on some little blooms, but it just helps you. So there is our expressive, how we're gonna do this. So for the sky, and I'm gonna go up here actually and make a little more of the green, the land mass. So the water is just really just simply out here. I might erase the water line. Don't worry if it's not super straight, don't freak out. So the sky again, is just this clear blue blue sky and then you see the water here. 
you can follow that blue color don't have to do it if you want to i'm just going to take some ultramarine just water this down um so the colors i have in my palette you can see them over here on the side and i always have them in the description box i have peacock blue here neutral tint prussian ultramarine cadmium yellow light i'm sorry deep uh, cadmium red light and burnt umber and i'll be using also i didn't mention this i'm sorry um liquitex acrylic ink you can use gouache i'm going to do some splattering so i'm just going to put some nice pretty blue sky in here you can make it more intense if you want to don't feel that you have to keep it the same color as me so it's just wet on dry here just using this flat wash brush and you can go keep adding some more color i mean i might take some of the neutral tint so I just took in the corner of the brush, just the tippy corner. You can add in some ominous skies if you want, and a little more blue. See, I like this tin because it has a really big surface that you can paint, mix the colors in. It's always good to try and use different types of palettes. And you can just wash it all off when you're done. So I'm just doing my simple sky might add a little more I want this to be dramatic so I'm going to make my sky dramatic I'm adding a little more blues maybe a little more of this neutral tint right up in here in the corner you can play around by it say it's on the cardboard so you can play around with like lifting up the cardboard I'm sorry it's stuck right there I'm gonna grab it's gonna stop where the where the water doesn't go so I'm gonna keep adding some paint paint and have it drip down a little bit. Grabbing some more water. Now I've really mixed the two. Doing a little more dramatic. My sky. We can have it kind of go down this way. Play around with it, guys. There's no right or wrong. Just going across. I might go in and add some more water, just a little drip. See what we got. See I'm holding it, moving it. I might go in and grab some neutral tint, get really dramatic. You can play around with the sky. If you don't like it, you can kind of wash it away a little bit. See, I'm just kind of tilting all that paint's going down, lifting it up. Now another thing, if you didn't like it, it's too dark, you can kind of lift it with your brush. See I'm kind of twisting it so that it could be kind of clouds that I've created. Just simple like that. And voila, we have our sky. Now our ocean, I might make a little bit lighter up here. And I'm moving the paint and tapping it on the paper towel. I'll put the Princeton 8 brush away for now. So the ocean, you know, again, whatever color, I mean, this is like a pale blue, grayish color. Again, mix the two. If it's very watery, you just tap it on your paper towel. Save off the excess water. I'm just gonna hold it on its edge. feeling and I'm not gonna be so concerned about the white you know spray from the white caps going onto the rocks pushing it down see down shoot. just like that remember we're using the photograph for inspiration we don't have to follow exactly everything we see it's an expression of the photograph of something you've taken. I do want to lift up some of this paint back here again from the background. Just so you can differentiate between the ocean and the sky. So I'm lifting up some of the paint. I just grab some water and I'll tap it back on the paper towel. See that? just like that. Now you can see the difference between the sky and the ocean. 
whereas before you could not it kind of blended together and we didn't want that all right let's get to the fun part so we've got a lot of greens in this photograph greens and then just a couple of these little pom-pom things that are pink I don't want pink <laughs> I'm going to use that red because I can so if you want to clean up your blue sky a little bit blue mess you could do that I'm just going to take a paper towel and just lift up some of this paint in here and take the same brush greens so I've got my yellow woohoo can add the peacock blue make a nice bright green I like to take a little burnt umber, mix that in, and get a little more olive green. Fixing up some lighting over here. And then mixing the two, it gets even lighter and yellower. Up here, you can get the, the Prussian blue. So it's darker, darker green. Again, I'll go ahead and add some burnt umber in here in the corner. So you've got the blendings of the greens. I'm gonna clean up my brush. And we're just going to play. So, I'll just take these greens. See how I'm just taking the brush? Just kind of playing like shh, 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 shh. And I'll take the edge of my brush and I'll grab the Prussian blue, the burnt amber. If it's a little too blue, that's fine. Tap it on the paper towel. Go back and grab your light green. Just kind of doing this movement here. Adding in some yellow. Getting pretty expressive, as I would say. Now I haven't really had the paint drip yet, but I want to play with that. So I'm going up here and adding. Just adding the colors. I'll add some deeper greens up here. This brush is great. You just kind of twist it, grab some browns and greens. See, I'm just kind of twisting it. Playing around with this. This is a simple brush. Nothing fancy or expensive. Again, just grabbing some blues. You saw me grab some Prussian blue in the corner, some burnt umber. Just like that. Just kind of twisting the brush. Now to get the greens out here in the photograph, just kind of throw those in real quick. Boop, boop, boop. And get out here. You could take your brush and kind of like, see it's going to make those little grasses already. See that? Because it's split. And you already have the grass. It's already doing the work for you. Now, I'm gonna grab some more yellow. See, we can get more of a yellow green down here and the burnt umber. Get it really wet. I'm kind of going into more of a brown kind of phase over here. Grab some water, kind of pushing that around. Tap it on the paper towel. And I'm gonna put some up here over in here. See, I'm holding it on an angle, by the way. Just, just keep grabbing this paint. See how we're getting expressive? You can kind of have the paint drip down this way. Still don't have any water here, so it's not going to drip in there. It's only going to go where the water's going to go. You can just kind of like... I didn't mention that you could use a credit card too, but we've talked about some of these tutorials where we use the credit card for scraping. You can use a paintbrush for scraping. I still see the pencil, which I like. Just kind of going here. I want to keep this kind of light and bright here. Concentrating everything in here. Going back with this paintbrush. Getting some more concentrated color. See the blue? Grab some yellow. And the brown. Kind of like dry brushing technique. Kind of Going around like this, wisping, wisping. <laughs> really just keeping it light. Grab some more of this bright yellow. Bright yellow, put it up over in here where it'd be a sunny area because some of the parts 
Now we did have some in the photograph, some sand back here. So grab some brown, stick it over in here. Now at this point you could take an old credit card, play around with scraping. So it's not super wet. So the paint will fall back into it. Again, we're getting expressive, guys. Woohoo! Get all your frustration, your anger out. I want you to have fun. A lot of people are getting frustrated these days, and I just want everybody to have fun when they paint. Look at that. It looks kind of crazy, but I love it. Right? You have plenty of time to get even crazier. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this paintbrush back again. Gonna make some more greens. I'll grab the Prussian blue and the yellow. I'll grab some of this brown amber. Maybe a little bit of red. Just kind of just tapping some of the dark green in here. See how I'm just kind of like going like this with the brush. Really right now it's just kind of cool has some life to it. Take some of this yellow. Again, trying to go over here, make it brighter. Get out here in these little green islands. Can grab some of this brown and some Prussian blue and go on the edge underneath. So it'll be a little bit darker here. Now, gonna grab some of this neutral tint on the corner of the brush. Oops. It's not doing, there we go. Just to give it a little oomph. You know, it's feeling like a, uh. Now at this point, you could take the Princeton eight. And also I did, I'm sorry, before I tell you that, I'm, I'm oh, kind of a spaz today. All right, let's just grab some more water because we want to do the acrylic ink thing and then we're going to go back in with the Princeton. So mixing up some more greens. Oh, the red got in there. Well, it's part of a party. <laughs> Gonna water this down a lot. Put some more bright green in here. So I might grab my peacock blue. Taking some of that out, made too much. My yellow. Really wet this down. It's a big watery green mess in here, but I love it. Getting the green in here. You want this kind of damp. Kind of going down here too. because I wanted to bleed in that um, acrylic ink. Putting in some neutral tint through here. It's ultramarine blue. Okay, a little bit darker. More ultramarine blue right in here. Okay, so then I have this acrylic ink Kind of similar to the same thing we do with um, gouache. If, when you, you know, it's gonna repel. So grab whatever brush works for you. I'll just grab an inexpensive brush, just a little old brush. And then I'm just gonna splatter some of this and see how it repels. Oh yeah. You don't want it everywhere. Trying to do some little ones. These are kind of big. I kind of like it already. There's some little ones. Little teeny, teeny, weeny ones. I'll do a little more concentrated ones down the front here. a nice look to it right just like this I think this is pretty I mean you don't even have to go further but we're gonna go further we are so at this point we can go and um, I'm clean up some of this crazy greens that I have going here I do want to you know concentrate on the, the, the ocean a little better so I'm gonna clean up some of this mess here I could take the Princeton Grab some of that ultramarine blue. A little bit of this 
neutral tint wall this down tap and paper towel and I'll just go in here and I'll just kind of really highlight the ocean better go right across just like so take your time and then do some little lines so it looks more like an ocean see it's a little bit darker go right across I'm trying to fix my line here so it doesn't look goofy yeah just kind of straightening that out if you have you know difficulty keeping it straight maybe you put tape, tape down um, or draw a pencil line down with a uh, ruler and it's going to go and add just a few little dark areas around the green and out here while this is drying could even darker the lines out here so it's like waves rippling through voila and then at this point this is still damp you can start to take like your burnt umber with this brush make some neutral tint make some nice browns maybe a little ultramarine blue you can start to just go like that for the grasses some of them try not to hit the the white maybe go underneath it Your eyes kind of try and draw down this way. You could wait until it's dry. I'm kind of just playing around with adding it ahead of time. Mixing up some more greens. That Prussian blue, a deeper green. And the yellow and the burnt umber. And I'll try and play with that out here. Get some real, you can get some even deeper, darker ones if you want. Expressive like this. Doesn't have to be green, it can be brown. Going taking in the burnt umber. Just you see my hand going like that. Sound effects and all. Even like noodle tint itself. Don't be afraid. You want it subtle, you wouldn't probably use it as much. But we're we're gonna be expressive here. So we're gonna be doing this. Okay. So now I can take some of my, my lovely color red that I like. Water this down just a bit. And I can start just placing that color in too. And around the yellow. Might even go and add some of this yellow. Don't be afraid to add color, right? I might kind of take my brush, water this down even more, and kind of play around with dripping it. Now you might have not even wanted the red. You could have stopped at the white. You don't have to follow me. I'm going to grab some yellow too. But I want it just to be kind of a, like a wildflower field in a way. So I'm taking some yellow concentrated color with the tip of this brush and just kind of tapping it around. I'm grabbing the red. Kind of in a diagonal. You see that kind of how I'm going with this in a diagonal? Grab some red. Take some red concentrated paint color. Just kind of pushing it around. Now I could grab some water or a spray bottle at this point. Oh, look at that. I think that's fun. Some people might not think that's fun, but I do. It's all a joy. I kind of like that kind of look in my abstracts. I'm gonna grab some yellow. Let's play around with that. I might even spray over here. So I'm going to turn it this way. 
Brady Mix Line. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Don't you love how I get excited? I do. I love to play. Watercolor is a great medium to play. Grab me some red. Ooh, what do we do, what do, we do with the red? I might not like that and pick some of that up. Tap some of the red in there. Ooh. Tippy tap, tippy tap. Yeah, I'm digging this, guys. All this crazy fun. And then you can go back in here, you know, if you want to put some really concentrated grasses. I just like to keep it really loose and fun. You don't have to do all that. Go back and add some green at this way. You could take some really concentrated yellow, brighten up some areas. All the fun you can do. So you can take some of this yellow, kind of whoosh, 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 the grass down this way. So this is still damp over here and I've lost some of my pretty whites. I can go back in and just put that in again. You know? Nobody says this rule. I take the actual dropper. Ooh, that was a big one. Maybe I don't want that. <laughs> I wanted some little ones. That's okay. It can play in the field. <laughs> This is what happens, guys. You just play and play and play. I'm going to add some green just to tone that down a little bit. So at this point, you're going to let it dry. You could throw some salt in here. People ask what salt do. Salt does the same thing, kind of like it repels the paint. It removes it. So, you know, playing around with that. Oh, you can use white gouache, which I have somewhere over here. But I did like just a simple acrylic ink. I might just go and use my little, I know I shouldn't use my Princeton brush, but take the brush tip and I can make my little ones and have them repel. It is better when you splatter because it's more natural, but you can strategically stick the color in also. I'm doing really tiny ones up in here. It's kind of creating a really pretty look. Yeah, and then that's pretty much it. I mean, you can go back in the scrape again while it's still wet. See what happens. But I don't want you to do too much, you know. I like the way it looks. I want it to dry. I'm going to come back a little bit and add some grasses. I can do it right here because it's dry, but and then the front is just so wet right now. You have to wait. I know, impatience, right? Gonna add some grasses here. Just making that movement of the brush. Just really simple. Add some darker color. Simple like that. Little tint. All these things you could do. This is how I would do a seascape. It's expressive. another fun seascape and you can go back in here and add some shadows underneath these little green mounds that you see like I said it doesn't have to be perfect like the picture we're just we're creating something exciting from just a reference photo see I'm just going back in here while it's still damp Take a neutral tint. Don't be afraid to play, guys. Right in there. All right, I'm gonna wait for this to dry and come back. Okay, guys, I let it dry. Pulling off my tape for the reveal. And voila. Like I said, you can go back in with your pencil or anything to get even more expressive. You know, I might wait till it completely dries. Mine's still a little damp, but I think we had fun today, right? Going back in and some more lighter colors, little smaller white ones out this way. So this is our expressive coastal. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have fun paying, painting. 
ah, goofy me. And, uh, you know, just playing. That's what it's all about, guys. Don't get stressed out. Don't get stressed out. This is supposed to be fun. Different, you know? Anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. Please hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We have a lot of fun over here. So take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.